Hello, welcome again to the Off Grid family. Today we're going to be adding some terminal ends to some very heavy two gauge wire. Um, and this will be going on a solar panel, well, a set of um, batteries for a solar setup I've done for my mum. So I will show you how to get these on here safely and snugly. Um, some people like to hammer them onto the ends. I don't particularly because I don't think it holds it any tighter than the way I do it anyway. Let's get on. Okay, so I, I need to start off by measuring out the length of cable to eight inches long. And I've actually drawn marks on my bench so I can see. It only has to be roughly eight inches because um, I'm, that's already just under an inch longer than I need it without the terminals on. And then we slowly cut through. be a lot easier if I had some better wire cutters but I don't so I just go side to side cutting through a couple more layers at a time each time One way to strengthen up your hand muscles. Done. Okay. Right, now we need to remove a section of the cable, uh, the uh, insulation to be able to fit this down. Uh, with these ones, it's only about a centimetre, 10 mils. So if I just make a little mark, like that, we just follow the mark round. Oh, this is terrible. Take your time, there's no real hurry. Okay. Now cut down from your mark downwards. Be careful of your body when you do that. Then just a pair of wire cutters or pliers, anything like that, should be able to start peeling back the insulation. There we go. And one end uncovered. Now, the company I bought these off, and I got them quite cheap, so I can't really, really grumble. They had on it their inside diameter measurements and the outside diameter measurements. So I made sure that the diameter, the inside diameter measurement on this matched exactly with the, well, a little bit bigger than this. But they were wrong. Their inside diameter is way off what they'd um, written. It's a lot, lot smaller. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to actually have to cut away a little bit of the wire here to be able to get it in. Um, there's no way I can force that on, there's quite a difference. But I don't want to cut too much of the wire out or there's no point buying such a thick gauge. So I'll take a little bit off now.
Okay, so a little bit of brute force, and I've got it on there. I hit it with a hammer a couple of times, and with this thickness of gauge wire, that's fine. I just placed it on the um, the workbench, hit it with a hammer, but I didn't want to do it while the camera was on here, or we'd end up causing all sorts of issues. Right, next job. Take a clamp, a vise, whatever you've got, because you do not want to be holding this. And a little clamp. This in like that. Okay. Now, we want to heat just the metal up. So, you can do this with a um, soldering iron, but I have tried it and it does take forever. Uh, also, doing this in a well ventilated area because there's a lot of nasty fumes that come off from the plastic getting warm, like the insulation, and from using solder, depending on what type of solder you've got. Whoops, I was trying to zoom in and set light to the plastic, what a div. Basically, you just keep feeding the solder in, and this will be now bonding with the terminal and the wire, and eventually, we'll make a, oh, a bit too hot there. Looks like we filled it right up. Right, I think that'll do. Now, this wire will be exceedingly hot all the way down. So you wanna now just leave it and to cool off. What you can do to speed up the progress is do two at the same time. So while you're waiting for that one to cool down, you come to this one, you start doing that. Once I've, once it's cooled down, I've done the other end, I will show you what you do next. Okay, so it's cooled down enough to touch. So what I'm gonna do, take it out of the clamp. So I'll do exactly the same on the other end. And once I'm at that stage, I'll turn the camera back on 
and get to the next step. Okay, so that's cooled down enough now, and both sides are done. Making sure that, well, if you don't have to, but making sure that they're both facing the same way so the holes can be accessed the same way. Um, this is still a bit warm, but it's absolutely fine. Now, take whatever color insulation tape you want. Now, okay, this is a bit of a controversial one as far as um, wires and terminals are concerned. There isn't a big uprising, you know, there's not going to be a revolt, but. Some people say to leave this free so you can actually see if there's any erosion going on under there. Others say cover it up. Now, if I had any um, heat shrink tubing, I would myself put some heat shrink tubing over it and heat it up, shrink it over, make it look all nice and pretty. But I don't have any of the right size. I, I do, but I can't find it anywhere. So I'm just going to use some um, insulation tape and also cover up where I burnt the wire, which was blinking silly. But I... It's only because I was recording, so I blame you guys. There we go. So just stretch it on, pull it around. There we go. Like I said, it's quite a time consuming process, but you want it done right and you want it done so that they're never moving from there. Um, you can, if you want, for a bit of extra security, although it's not necessarily necessary, you can um, hit with a, um, a punch here on a solid surface, bang it, and that will crimp it to the wire as well. I would do both. If you're going to do that, I would still solder, because that won't hold it forever, or in my opinion it won't. But there we go. Two fairly similar terminals and now I've only got another 20 of them to do. Happy days.